Uh, here we are today, a Monday, uh, a lot of work. Uh, first of all, we'll be looking at um, a couple of topics today. Let's start off with um, Southern Kaduna and um, the recurring security issues uh, in Southern Kaduna. Well, as you know, or maybe you don't, uh, Southern Kaduna, there's, there's a preponderance of Christians there, and they have long been complaining that um, um, this thing we call marginalization in different parts of the country is a very, very serious affliction uh, to them in Southern Kaduna. And um, a, Saduna, uh, a Southern Kaduna rights activist, uh, Mr. Francis Damina, uh, is our guest this morning. He's also a commentator on religion and society. So good morning to you, uh, Francis. Thank you for making time for us this morning. Thank you, Uncle Yori. It's nice to be here as always. Yes, <laughs> as always. Um, well, I, I, I like the way you're smiling because that, that, that will sort of give me some optimism that uh, perhaps uh, there is uh, uh, indeed a, a chink of light, uh, shall we say. Uh, because reading your writings, uh, because you, uh, you, you're a prolific uh, writer also on the same subject matter, um, you're not at all satisfied uh, with the state of progress of relations between uh, integrating Southern Kaduna, to use your word, integrating Southern Kaduna and the rest of um, the country, and it's a religious thing. Uh, give us a background, you know, if you would brief, please, uh, so that people could understand where the um, apprehension is coming from uh, in relation to Southern Kaduna. Thank you very much, Uncle Yori. Uh, our pundits have gone to town with a lot of theories and postulations. Mm -hmm. And then it is really very difficult to pinpoint uh, as to which is the superior Hello? theory. Hello? What happened? Please continue. Hello? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, please continue. You just got to, it's quite difficult to, you know, pinpoint the uh, particular uh, vexation or something like that. But please continue. Uh, Uncle Yori, whatever may be the reasons behind our insecurity in Southern Kaduna, which is not only peculiar to Southern Kaduna because it's a national issue. Everywhere you go to, there is a sense of uh, insecurity and then people feel that... Uh, um, uh, Nigeria has become or turned into what is called uh, the Hobbesian called the sack, which is uh, that life uh, as in a state of nature has become nasty, brutish, and short. But uh, whatever may be the reasons, uh, since uh, the coming of President Tinubu and then with the appointment of the service chiefs, I think things have uh, improved. I have been on the run. Uh, far away from my village uh, as a result of uh, insecurity. So many people have been killed, so many lives have been lost, and so on. Uh, uh, way back in uh, November, they came for me. Luckily for me, I was away. But uh, unfortunately, uh, some of my um, the siblings were killed, and then uh, repeatedly they have been coming to the village, going after people, uh, to, it may even interest you to know that I come from the same village uh, with the former director general of the National uh, Institute, Kuru, Professor Yakubu Senke. And the very day I was leaving the village to Potako to attend Bishop Kuka's uh, book launch, Witness to Reconciliation, was the very day he came to the village, and it was the very night that uh, he was killed by this uh, bandit, so to say. But... Um, Having said all that, uh, with the appointment of the service chiefs, uh, things have uh, stabilized. In fact, uh, I, I just came from, uh, from my village, and then I saw that many people who have spent quite a lot of time in exile have come back home. Uh, we had a burial of uh, one of our mothers, and then I saw that people came home, and then they are relaxed, and then everybody is going to farm uh, because of, uh, lastly, I think because of the symbolism uh, of the appointment of uh, the service chief, especially for the fact that one of our own, uh, that is the chief of defense staff, who is from Zangon Katab local government, uh, who is a son of the soil, has been appointed. So I think that sent a signal to the region. And you, as you could see, or you may have seen, uh, with his appointment, uh, so many women in the market square uh, went dancing. Uh, the, the whole southern Kaduna 
went on jubilation and then people are still jubilating and then it has given them a psychological uh, security so much so that uh, I saw people in the last few days that have been in the village I saw people go into their farmlands and then nothing has happened except that uh, there are some pockets of uh, criminal uh, criminalities here and there and so on so but for the symbolism of the appointment of the chief of uh, defense staff I think uh, the, the the bandits are uh, have gone on vacation. So we don't mm. know what that means, sir, but to my mind, uh, I would say uh, it, has, uh, it is a map reading into the heart and mind of uh, the president, which is to say that the body language of every president matters. Uh, president Tinubu has demonstrated to the people of Southern Kaduna and across uh, that he is not uh, ready to tolerate uh, the insecurity that has lingered over uh, this years and then when you go to the marketplaces all you hear uh, is that the bandits had told our people uh, that um, the chief of defense staff happens to be an atiaf man a katab man from zangon katab and that he is not going to tolerate them and so on so for a very long time i think since his appointment and then uh, since uh, the epiphany of sort uh, of the body language of the president uh, the bandits themselves uh, have gotten the message that it's not going to be uh, business as usual. Indeed. And uh, in that sense, uh, maybe our caption, uh, recurring security issues in southern Kaduna, uh, it's almost like we could scratch that. And um, because we are in happier times now, uh, we can only, you know, look forward with uh, optimism, especially, as you say, keeping a keen eye on things, um, it's not business as usual uh, anymore. And, um, well, you, 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 said, you said the word a couple of times. You spoke about the symbolism uh, in the appointment of the uh, chief of uh, staff, army staff. Um, well, is, is this not as a result of um, uh, perhaps um, uh, a sort of a long-standing um, misunderstanding or... Uh, a long standing, uh, not so much misunderstanding, it's much more than misunderstanding because the people are killed and people die and all of that. It's going to be a lot more than that. Um, but uh, would, you, would you venture as far out as to say that um, we can begin to look, as you said, following from the administration of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu and the indications, aka body language, as we say uh, locally, um, sort of say that those harrowing days might well be behind us. Um, you know, every part of Nigeria you go to, and uh, in every department of our lives, in every region, uh, in every nationality within uh, this uh, entity called Nigeria, people are complaining about uh, marginalization and so on. Uh, but uh, to my mind, um, uh, this, uh, the implications or the symbolisms, as I may say, um, of the appointments made by President Tinubu so far has indicated and then has given our people a, a sense of uh, belonging. Because uh, you know all this why it has been crisis uh, between uh, the former government of uh, my friend, uh, His Excellency Nasu uh, Erufai, and then the people of Saharan Kaduna. But I even think it's a mistake uh, to say that uh, uh, there was a rift between the two parties. Uh, to my mind, as I, as I argued somewhere, uh, there was no problem between the people of Southern Kaduna and then the former governor. It was an elitist crisis uh, between him and the elite uh, who, after 2015, saw themselves, uh, themselves behind the kitchen of power and so on with all the implications. And so, so all kinds of narratives were sold home and then so on. Uh, people... Uh, swallowed them hook, line, and sinker, and so on. Uh, uh, issues about enmity, this one doesn't like us, and things and, uh, like that. Um, and uh, there is enough blame to go around. But uh, to my mind, too, I will say that uh, uh, the, the, the former governor didn't manage the situation very well. And all was needed at that time uh, is just uh, a sort of uh, mediation. We needed uh, a statement. Uh, to mediate between uh, the governor and the elite. The ordinary people didn't know anything about it, but it was taken that uh, the entire people of Southern Kaduna hated his government, which was not true. As far as I'm concerned, the ordinary person 
uh, in the various communities that uh, make up southern Kaduna didn't even bother about who became what in the state. Uh, it was the business uh, of the political class and so all that they were bothered about uh, was to go to their farms, come back and then uh, be sure that there is full security until the, uh, the next uh, farming season. So that was the problem. But um, uh, you could imagine that um, uh, people lost their lives and then the, the narratives revolve around or hovered around the fact that uh, uh, we have a government that didn't care about us. We, ha we have a government that uh, excluded us from the uh, scheme of things. Uh, we, ha we have a government that uh, have not uh, been able to reach out to us even in a uh, moment of travels uh, when we lost our dear ones and when we were bereaved and so on and so forth. So, and then there was also the criminalization, the ethnic criminalization of uh, the Fulanis. Where I come from, I think uh, we have Fulanis that were born, brought up, and then uh, we, we, we saw them with our grandparents. We don't know where they came from, as we, we don't know where we also came from, and so on. But I, I make the point that uh, everyone has suffered some sort of loss. Everybody has got a share as far as the, uh, this issue of insecurity is, uh, is concerned. But uh, there was uh, a faulty narrative that uh, seemed to suggest that uh, a particular tribe also were behind insecurity, which is uh, not the issue. Because I can, as I sit here, I can name so many Fulani people from my village uh, who were killed, uh, who lost their dear ones, uh, whose children were ki uh, kidnapped, and then they had to sell five or ten cows uh, to pay the, uh, the, the kidnappers and so on and mm. so forth. So to mm. my mind, um, these are the issues. Oh, okay. You know, um, and, and not to be raking over old coals, um, but uh, w what you're seeing now, um, to, at least this morning on this program, uh, is quite conciliatory. And as you are saying, you are disabusing or, or de-emphasizing de some, you know, prejudices and... Uh, all these um, kind of things. Uh, but I I in the past, you have been highly critical of your very good friend, as you put it, uh, His Excellency, the former governor of um, Kaduna State. Um, uh, sh sh are, are all these now in the territory of bygones? And uh, we're now looking with a fresh vision uh, in this administration, uh, looking to the future with um, optimism that all of these things, starting, as you've just said, with the appointment now of um, the Chief of Army Staff, there's, there's a lot more to come in terms of normalizing um, the, the, the situation uh, in the uh, Christians and Muslims uh, and all ethnicities in Kaduna. Um, it, it is not impossible for them to all live in harmony for the development of the state. It, it might well be that you can't hear me anymore. Uh, hello, Francis. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. No, well, um, what I, I, it was more of a comment that um, things are different now. You had been very critical of your uh, friend, as you put him, uh, His Excellency, the former governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai. Um, we leave all of that now in the territory of bygones. Now it is clear it is getting clearer and clearer that um, there can be a sort of togetherness in, there can be, you know, a, a sort of unity in the diversity within uh, the religious sector in Kaduna State. No, no, um, I think um, a large chunk of the agitation was created by the political class uh, because okay. um, the ordinary, okay. yes, uh, it was created by the political class. But as I said to you, there is some sort of stability now with the way things are going, especially with the body language of the president and then with the symbolism of his appointments and all that and so on. And as you could also see, uh, in the new governor, he has been trying to, to reach out to people and then I will encourage him to, to continue to do that. And then uh, people have been talking about uh, 
the balance in appointments and so on that uh, sometimes you see uh, so far in this appointment you see five persons from the other divide and then five from this side and so on and so forth our uh, people have nothing against uh, anybody uh, neither has anybody anything against us i think uh, this uh, crisis has been uh, created by the political class who saw themselves out of power Oh, so on. Oh, okay. So, in my mind, uh, oh. yes, yes. So it has nothing completely to do with uh, religion. Okay, it doesn't. Okay. Um, uh, let, let me bring in Mukta, who has called in from Kano. Good morning to you, Mukta. Well, good morning, Uncle Yori. How are you doing? Good morning, sir. Very well, thank you. Uh, let, me, let, me make some, let me make some contributions to, to this topic. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me make some contributions to what you are discussing. All right. One thing is that we should record that 30, 40 years ago, Plato, Kaduna, Taraba, and the rest of it were in a peace. Were in peace. Everybody accepts one another as brothers keepers. Now the crisis that is happening today in in these states, they are created by the elites. The political leaders and the traditional rulers, they don't, they, don't, they don't require military intervention. Yes, I can hear you. Please continue. Okay, we, we, lost, we lost that caller, but um, I'm, I'm sure Francis, he, you know, he was doubling what you had said. Uh, which is that this crisis was mainly of political origin, and even you know even the whole governance structure, traditional governance uh, structure of the place. Um, so that's where he got to before we lost him. Um, talking about Mr. Mukhtar, who called in from Kaduna. So you're on all. He's on all fours with you, uh, Francis. But I, I wonder. In the meantime, before we get him back or get another caller in. You, you say that it's, a, it's promising so far. Uh, it, it's promising so far uh, the, what the situation has sort of progressed to. If you were, you know, as a, as a writer, you know, on uh, you know, religion and society, apart from being a Southern Kaduna rights activist, uh, is there, what, what, are, what, what would you want uh, Mr. President to also consider doing? But um, I understand that... Um, we have someone else in from, uh, uh, okay, Reverend Dominic. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Jerry. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good morning to our guest. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, Francis, can you hear Reverend Dominic on the phone? I can hear him, sir. You're welcome, Reverend Dominic. Okay, okay. let me go on. Can I go on? Yes, please. Uh, 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 oh, he, he has spoken very well. But I want to disagree with him in this area. If he suggests there is a, a kind of peace in southern Kaduna because of the appointment of the chief of staff, it means that there's some element of hopelessness in our nation's security architecture. I mean this. We in the southeast, when are we going to expect the chief of staff for we to find peace there? What I'm trying to say is this. It doesn't matter where the chief of staff comes from. Or what, what, where the army chief of staff comes from, where the president comes from. What's supposed to be in the interest of every nation is a how to secure, I don't know if you can hear me, whoever is in power should secure all part of Nigeria. Let me repeat myself. He was saying that there's a seeming kind of peace in the southern Kaduna because one of their own has been appointed as chief of army staff. And I said that, that you know, suggestion or narrative is faulty. What are people in the southeast? What are people in the Bronx? Do we need a chief of army staff from our country, from our village, for we to find peace? I think that narrative is faulty. What we need to say is that Nigeria must be secured. Whether it is southern Kaduna, whether it is southeast, whether it is northern Nigeria, in insecurity anywhere is insecurity everywhere in Nigeria. We need a strong political will, no matter who is in power, no matter who is chief of army staff, to secure a nation called Nigeria, not having hope because of if you appoint somebody from certain area, that area will not have peace. If you understand what I'm trying to say, I don't like that narrative. If there's peace in Southern Kaduna, 
It means that Mr. President, President mean well to say enough is enough. Not because one of their own is the chief of army staff. That's my own narrative. That All right. is not right. Because okay, Reverend Dominic. We are in Nigeria, and every one of us will not produce chief of army staff before we find peace. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Um, I, I hear you. Uh, Francis, uh, how would you uh, uh, react to, to that? Uncle Yori, I will still insist on the symbolism of the uh, appointment of the chief of defense staff. By way of corrigendum, I didn't say the chief of staff, the chief of defense staff. And then whatever might be the implications of this, whatever he might be. You, you see, there is a difference between what is and what ought to be. I'm, t I'm telling him, I'm only reporting, I'm not creating. You understand? Uh, before now, let me give you a scenario of what happened. When they came to my village, when they came for me, I was not at home, but they killed two and went away. And then we buried the two the following day. That same day after uh, the, the funeral, they still came back and killed two. And then, so when I went to the village, so many boys came to me, and then they were pinpointing, we know them. Uh, we saw him, we saw this one, we saw that one. And then you, you could see that, that there is truth in what they were saying. But where do you go to? Several times, on my own accord, I went to the police to report certain things, criminalities, and so on and so forth. There are people who handle all kinds of things, uh, people who, who killed uh, certain persons in broad daylight, and then nothing happened. Nothing happened. So what I'm saying is that uh, with the appointment of the chief of defense staff, and then with uh, President uh, Tinubu, uh, in place, and then the body language uh, of the president, now uh, the practically seen by our people, suggests very clearly, not uh, really to our people, but to the bandit themselves, that there is somebody in office who is ready, who is not ready to tolerate their nonsense. That is what I'm saying. So I'm not saying that uh, the, the chief of staff should come and build a barrack, and then he should come and, since he is from our side, that he should come and build a uh, whatever, and that he should pay attention to Southern Kaduna. No, he has not even come home, and then he do, uh, we wouldn't even want to disturb him. He should do his work. He's chief of defense staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or not of, uh, of Southern Kaduna, because Southern Kaduna is not a state. It's just a sub-region. So I insist that uh, the appointment of the chief of defense staff has sent a signal to the bandits that there is somebody in office that is not ready to tolerate their nonsense, and as simple as that. All right. Um, I think, thank you very much. We're going to have to uh, leave it there. The point, you, you appreciate the point Reverend Dominic was making, that, okay, there are other people that also have challenges. Uh, whereas you say that you are, you know, sort of assuaged by this particular uh, movement and appointment, uh, the Reverend gentleman was pointing out that, well, I, but it was indicating that I also have my own issues. Uh, can it only be that it is only when one of my own is appointed uh, similarly that I can say, oh, well, you know, there, there is still hope. And uh, quite frankly, there's a sense in which both of you are saying you sort of responded to that, that, well, that's not exactly what you're saying, but you do think that a person of such a stature in southern Kuduna sends forth the message that, it's not going to be business as usual. And indeed, you said at the top of the program that things are different from how they used to be. And you just hope that it keeps that way and then gets better. Well, we're going to have to leave it there, uh, Mr. Damina. But um, thank you very much for giving us this perspective uh, on the situation in Kaduna. And all of Nigeria is um, hoping and praying that um, our peace will return to the land, not just southern Kaduna, but everywhere else that there are these um, issues of uh, a lack of uh, harmony in the, in the land. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis uh, Damina, Southern Kaduna rights activist and um, commentator on religion and society. Thank you for coming on our program. Thank you, Uncle okay, Yuri, and thanks break. for what you do oh. for society. Thank you very much.